Welcome to the PLC Professor's Workshop and Lab. This is where I knock out all of the courses, videos, and lab manuals, lab project manuals. And this next group of lectures, there are half a dozen or so, and they're philosophical in the sense that they're generic. They are not for any specific brand or model of PLC. So you could watch this next group of videos regardless of what brain you're interested in and learn some good stuff. They are technical in a sense, but they're generic. And that's why I call them philosophical because we're not talking uh, the nuts and bolts and the actual hardware. Once we get done with these videos, this short series, then we'll get into something more specific for the Micro 800 with Connected Components Workbench. Enjoy. Thank you for watching. Basic PLC programming with the Micro 800 controllers. This discussion is going to be around what does a PLC do? Not what is a PLC, but what does it do? And specifically, what does it do for you? What does it do for us? The reason this question is so important in understanding what we will cover later is that if you had a problem and you were looking for a solution, what would you be looking for? So looking at what a PLC does provides you an insight into how PLCs came about and why in today's automation, when they're looking to solve a problem, if they know what a PLC does, that provides it as a choice. Your logic. Your logic originates in your brain. It is a result of something that you want to accomplish, which is stored in your memory, and the result of your observation from your five senses. Now, we're not going to use all five senses in our example. That is what you have for input, and your output from your logic is a muscular action. Essentially, you clone your observations and reactions into the programmable logic controller. And here's an example. You have the responsibility to run a conveyor with the sole purpose of moving a carton to an exact spot on the conveyor and then leave it there. You have a forward and a reverse momentary push button to run the conveyor. Reverse is there just in case you aren't paying close enough attention and you have to back it up. You observe a carton rolling down and resting against the de-energized leading edge of the belt conveyor. You focus your eyes on the spot on the conveyor where you want the carton to come to rest and you press the forward button and when it comes to rest, you stop. Keep in mind that you did not stop the conveyor with your finger. Your muscle reaction released the forward button that opened a contact to remove electricity from the motor, the motor de-energized and the conveyor stopped. There were three elements to our illustration, your eyes, your logical processing of the image from your eyes in relationship to what you had stored in your brain as a goal. Your eyes observe the position of the object and your reaction to the logical reasoning with your finger on the push buttons forward, release, or reverse. Input, logic, output. This is a continuous loop of visual observation, logical conclusion, and output at the push buttons. Look first, then think, take an action. Let's replace these three elements with three devices. An input device, a logical device, and an output device. Because we have precision with the photo sensor, we do not need a reverse action to position the object. Just forward start stop control. The photoelectric switch is placed where you want the object to stop in that position. When the object interrupts the optical path of the sensor, the controller knows that the object has arrived. The output of the controller operates an electronic switch contacts, just like the push button, to run the conveyor until the optical path of the photo sensor is blocked. When the path is blocked, then the conveyor stops. The logic that was in your head that's now cloned into the controller states that if the photo sensor is not blocked, the conveyor runs. If the photo sensor is blocked, then the controller through the output releases the contacts and the conveyor motor de-energizes and there sets the object. The output from the photo sensor to the controller is binary. Something is blocking or not blocking. Zero or one, zero volts or 24 volts DC. The current logic is limited to running the conveyor forward until the photo eye is blocked. 
since it's an object. If you want to do more with the programmable logic controller, then you have to give it more instructions. To give it more instructions, you have to give it more information. Here we've expanded our input to three positions on the conveyor belt. Now with your eyes, you think of your eyes roaming the full length of the whole system. Well, a controller can't do that. It has to have a photoelectric sensor or some sort of sensor for every single position. Here we have three. So if we have a carton come down the gravity feed conveyor, 2PE photo I2 tells the controller, tells the logic against whatever's in memory, that there is a carton available to come onto the conveyor. At that point, the conveyor can then pull the carton onto the conveyor until it blocks 1PE photo I1 and then it stops. Now you have a carton blocking 1PE and 2PE, then the controller can decide further what to do next because it knows that there is a carton at 2PE, a carton at 1PE, and nothing at 3PE. Now what it doesn't know is exactly where those cartons are sitting on the conveyor and what position they're in blocking the photo eye because you see you could slide those cartons back and forth. So there's always more to it. This is just kind of a light introduction 